Yeah, so I, Stan Robinson is absolutely my favorite utopian because he depicts in his utopias not worlds in which all the problems have been solved, but worlds in which the um, collective action problem of how we get along while we solve problems has been in large part solved. Um, he writes worlds not in which there, there is no disaster, but in which disaster is attended by kindness and conscientiousness and a sense of shared human destiny as opposed to greed and fear and uh, uh, a sense of individual destiny, the, the kind of Mad Max future where um, the only way to survive is at the expense of everyone else. Uh, and that to me is the, is the genuinely optimistic prediction because we live in a dynamic universe, right? Whatever works today will no longer work tomorrow because something will have changed by tomorrow. And so the important thing isn't whether or not all the circumstances are good. The important thing is what happens when the circumstances are poor. Uh, that um, it's not how well the system works, it's what happens when it fails that distinguishes a utopia from a dystopia. So you take Stan Robinson in a book like 2312, uh, that's, a, that's a book where, that has futures that are every bit as grim as The Road by Cormac McCarthy, but the reason that Stan's book is a utopia and, and McCarthy's book is a dystopia is because McCarthy visits upon the human race the slander that when the lights go out, people go over to their neighbor's house and kill them and eat them, literally in the case of McCarthy. And, and Robinson aspires to a future that where the, when the lights go out, people go over to their neighbor's houses and see how they can help. You know, when the, when the power fails, people open their freezers and barbecue everything inside them because it's going to thaw out anyways and share it with their neighbors. And, you know, books like uh, Paradise uh, Made in Hell by Rebecca Solent documents systematically how in times of disaster we have a narrative, especially those of us at a distance, that is uh, both racialized and tinged with class anxiety about poor people uh, acting in a barbaric way uh, and uh, visiting upon the rich, you know, uh, a kind of vengeance for inequality. But that when you actually look on the ground, that apart from elites who are gripped in their, a panic of their own making about uh, uh, this, this coming vengeance, this sense, I guess, of, of kind of retributive guilt that, you know, they, they, that having lived so high off the hog for so many years in the, in the midst of people uh, with nothing, that surely vengeance must be soon, um, that actual kind of normal people just, just kind of help each other out and that where you see horrific violence and, and barbarism, it is almost always the, the fault of uh, an anticipatory uh, uh, preemptive violence against everyday people on the grounds that they must be on the verge of, of breaking loose into barbarism, the, the preemptive shooting of looters, that sort of thing. You know, the, looting is, especially in times of, of existential disaster, is, is really just, uh, you know, liberating of supplies. I mean, and, and literally in the case of uh, Hurricane Katrina, CNN aired footage of white people breaking into chemist shops and taking medicine and water and food and described it as commandeering and black people doing the same things and described it as looting. So that elite panic uh, is one of the most horrific narratives that we have and is itself the source of uh, unimaginable suffering in times of crisis. Uh, and so utopianism is not just important as uh, a way of thinking about the human race, but as a countervailing force to that narrative, as a way of kind of keeping people from assuming that their neighbors are going to come over and eat them, and so going over and preemptively shooting their neighbors before it happens. I'm through. I'm through.